What I love most about intangible things is that without touching anything, they can touch millions of people. Consider dreams. Like the one in 1963, Washington, D.C., the one had by Dr. Martin Luther King, a preacher who had this seed of a vision that was planted in the soil of love. Or should I say he had a seed of love that was planted in the soil of justice. Regardless, this dream wasn't physical matter that you could just put in a box. And that mattered because it meant that though you could stop the Negro from voting, you couldn't stop him from dreaming. And dreaming that one day we would all value the dignity God has given every human being, especially the ones deemed ugly, unfit, threatening, or otherwise unnecessary for life. And beloved, we are deceived if we think we are immune from passively or actively reinforcing the marginalized plight. After all, Dr. King had to nonviolently fight some of his own white Christian brothers and sisters who, at worst, hated him. With their Bibles open, they hated him or at best, loss sight of a dignity never earned but to all God given because God made all people in his glorious image. A dignity that makes a person worthy of love and therefore a dignity that makes a person worthy to live. Isn't it tragic that in our day and age when an adoption can cost up to 40K but for, for, for an abortion, 400 bucks is all one needs to pay? I wanna say again, this dignity makes people worthy to live. And ironically, that makes it a dignity worth dying for. And five years later, in 1968, that is exactly what Dr. King did. After all, his body was not like the dream. It was a physical thing, like that bullet slip, slip, slipping snug into the chamber of the Remington model number 760. This the weapon of the enemy, though love the weapon of a dreaming hero. This the pump action rifle in the white knuckled hands of James Earl Ray, a coward in love with his whiteness hiding across the street from Memphis, Tennessee's Lorraine Motel, where Dr. King stood at 6 p.m. Tick tock. Ray took the shot, tick tock, the bullet clock, tick tock, Dr. King's right cheek, and then at 6.01, tick tock. The dreamer lay there, his body done, but not the dream. You see, Dr. King may have been gunned down, but not the dream. The bullet could have the man, but it couldn't clip his wings. And if you listen closely, saints, you can still hear him sing, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Now I'm gonna quickly dash and fast forward 50 years past 1968 in our time machine, just to show you how though Satan may destroy the body, God Almighty thus far has seen fit to preserve the dream. See what I mean when in 2015 on April 4th, Walter Scott, an unarmed black man, is gunned down to the South Carolinian ground. And when she's interviewed about it, his mother says something profound in the midst of days oh so dark. She says of a white officer who shot her son, I feel forgiveness in my heart because of Christ. This sister, strong in the Lord, I can hardly believe what she said. She clearly believed that because Christ is alive, one day racism will be dead. But we're not there yet, but we're not there yet. But for the sake of faithfulness, we must fight ignorancy, complacency. We should use our privileges to serve one another as we push back against all of Satan's schemes because brothers and sisters, fight with hope. For evil may touch our bodies and may harm our bodies, but not the dream. Thank you.